Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMama.com. I want to talk about how we can help children learn the basic addition and subtraction facts and actually memorize them. Now, with the basic addition and subtraction facts, I mean the single digit addition facts like 8 plus 9, 5 plus 3, 4 plus 7, where both of these numbers are single digits, and then the corresponding subtraction facts. For example, 8 plus 9 is 17, and so from that we get two subtraction facts that correspond to it. 17 minus 9, which would be 8, and then 17 minus 8. So even though 17 is a two-digit number, these kind of subtractions still belong to the same category, and children are expected to learn them and memorize them by the end of second grade, typically. Okay, and then there's few principles that children need to learn and use that help them with some of the facts. And I've written those principles here, and it's obvious to us that, you know, any number plus zero, you don't have to memorize it. Five plus zero is five, or zero plus five, the other way. Or any number take away zero, it doesn't change the number. Or any number take away the same number, like nine minus nine, children will eventually learn it's zero, and they need to be taught that. They don't know it just in the beginning. And any number plus one is the next number. This is another principle that children need to learn and practice. They don't know it without that. Any number take away one is the previous number. The first thing we are going to look at is sums of these numbers, or, or sums with, maybe you want to call it that, sums with six or sums of six. And this means finding all the possible combinations of numbers that will add up to this number. And here I've drawn it out with six, but children should learn it for all these numbers, up to ten at least. And I have to say that little ones like kindergartners and first graders love doing this kind of, filling out these kind of patterns. And so we will have pictures to show them that six and zero make six, and then it could be five and one, four and two, three and three. And children would fill out the additions, okay? I fill them out here. They will notice that there's a pattern here, that here's six here, and then here's one less, five, one less here, four, one less here, three. But here it increases one by one. And uh, this pattern helps them learn these particular addition facts. And it also gives the addition facts a structure. Instead of being just random facts, they are now in a structure. And that helps children memorize them better. And uh, also, you might want to, depending on the child and situation, include the other kind of addition where you switch these addends, because then children learn that the addition is commutative. So 6 plus 0, or it can be 0 plus 6. 5 plus 1, or they can write 1 plus 5. 4 plus 2, or it can be 2 plus 4, equals 6. Next, we come to fact families, and they are a natural extension of what we just looked at previously. Here I have all fact families associated with 6, where the sum is 6. And of course you should have children study fact families with 5, 7, 8, 9, 10 also. And we got 4 different fact families, you know, either 6 and 0 are the numbers used, or 5 and 1, or 4 and 2, and then 3 and 3. I've seen in school books often fact families are taught with numbers that um, are just random numbers, they don't put them in a structure like this, and so that is why I like this better. It helps children memorize the addition and subtraction facts better, and also teaches them concepts and a structure. Now, one note, children need to have learned the connection between addition and subtraction first, before they can actually start filling out these kind of complex fact families, and many of them at the same time. Next, we are going to look at a fun trick that most children love. Imagine 9, that it wants to be 10. It so badly wants to be 10 that it wants to borrow 1 or take 1 from the other numbers when it's added. And so 9 plus 7, think of it, that 9 wants to be 10, so it takes 1 from 7. And 9 becomes 10, 7 has only 6 left, and then you add 10 plus 6, which is easy because children need to be taught how these kind of additions with 10 end up being the teen numbers. 10 plus 6 is 16. You can use the same trick with 8. Just 
tell them that 8 really wants to be 10, or is itching to be 10, and 8 needs to take away 2 from some other number. So it takes 2 from the 5 or whatever you are adding, and 8 becomes 10, 5 becomes 3, and then you add 10 plus 3 equals 30. Now let's look at doubles. The doubles are where you add the same number to itself. 1 plus 1, 2 plus 2, 3 plus 3, 8 plus 8, and so on. And most math books practice these. Once children have memorized their doubles, then there's another so hidden set of addition facts they can learn with the help of the doubles. And I put them here in green. For example, 4 and 4 equals 8. Once they know that, then if you take one number less than 4 and one number more than 4, which are 3 and 5, then the sum is also 8. The sum does not change. It's kind of like you t take away 1 from this one and give it to this one, 3 and 5. And for each double there is an accompanying fact like that. 8 plus 8 is 16, but so is 7 plus 9. And every time you have two numbers whose difference is 2, these 6 and 8 are two numbers apart, then it's kind of like if you make both of these to be the middle number, 7, you get 7 plus 7 equals 14. And so this way, these kind of facts can be actually solved with the help of knowing the doubles. Here's something fun also. Number rainbows, and children absolutely love these. The idea is to practice subtraction. We take a number in the teens and then find numbers that add up to 13, for example, here. So 1 and 12 make 13, so we draw an arc there from 1 to 12. Then from 2 to 11, 3 to 10, and so on. And children should study them in this manner. But 6 and 7 are like a pair that make 13. 5 and 8 are like a pair. 4 and 9 are like a pair. And once they have the rainbow made, or they have made the rainbow, then we practice subtraction from 13 with it. So 13 minus 5, the child can look at 5 and go with the arc. Oh, it's 8. That's the answer. 13 minus 7, go to 7, follow the arc, 6 is answer. And practice like that for a while. It helps them see a structure in it, and helps them also memorize it. And now we are finally getting to the drill. Uh, just to note, many times teachers think that drill is where you start, but I don't want to start necessarily there. And here, this drill is special because we show the facts to the student in order. This is a good starting point because when they know 8 plus 2 is 10, then you ask them 8 plus 3, they know it's the next number, 11. It's really easy for them if you drill them in order. 8 plus 2 is what? 8 plus 3 is what? And so on down the line. But then, after a few times of that, you, you the teacher starts pointing to these problems in a random order, like this, and the student will then answer from memory. And another thing that helps students is that let's say that they have learned the doubles, 8 plus 8 is 16. So this fact here becomes like a helping fact or like a pivotal point, helping point, that if they remember this, they can easily figure out this real quick, or this, because it's one less or one more. And then one more question, what about subtraction facts? Should we drill them too? The answer is, yes, we should drill them at some point, but I feel it's much more crucial to learn the addition facts, because all these subtraction facts can be solved when the child knows the addition facts. For example, 13 minus 5. When you know that 8 plus 5 is 13, then there's the answer, 8, to the subtraction problems. There's no need to actually ever totally memorize them in that sense, because they can always be solved if the child has a good grasp, good, good memory of all the basic single-digit addition facts. Thank you.